Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I'm going to be showing you a really awesome void build that I've made to accompany the new Heart Shadow Exotic which you can get from the Duality Dungeon at random. You get one chance per character per week um, and the, it it's awesome. It really is. Um, basically what the sword does is that heavy attacks when you have full charge uh, will turn you invisible and they'll fire out like kind of a handheld supernova void blast uh and if you hit enemies while invisible with the void blast actually i'm not sure if it has to be invisible just hit them with the void blast uh they'll get weakened and you'll get a short damage buff um while you're invisible it's permanent but obviously you can't attack while invisible so when you do attack and you aren't invisible anymore it lasts two seconds um so you could basically st uh, store that damage buff until your invis runs out, and then it'll last for two seconds. Um, it's a 25% increase, so the same as Radiant. Uh, but you will also be weakening the enemy for 15%. And because not many people are actually running Void anymore, or at least running weakening nades, um, you will be essentially not only helping yourself, but helping the entire team as well by weakening that enemy. Um, but yeah, in total, that is a pretty hefty damage buff. Um, it's a 40% damage buff essentially because you're weakening and you got a 25% damage buff uh, on top of it. So yeah, and it can be propped infinitely, right? So you can just keep doing the heavy attack uh, when you've got full charge and it will just keep on reprocking weaken and keep giving you that 25% damage buff. Um, so the sword can be used for DPS quite effectively. It's like Lament. Um, it works hand in hand with Lament as well because you can weaken four Lament users. Uh, so yeah. That is the sword. Also, I guess I should mention the catalyst. You get faster movement while you're invisible. Uh, it's kind of like Assassin's Blade speed. You just are really fast while you're invisible. Um, and then you also get a few more hits. You get six more hits. This sword unfortunately falls to very, very low ammo capacity. Uh, it has almost nothing in here. This is, this is quite low, especially since it's been increased as well. 50 base is just like nothing. Um, that might be the lowest the sword can get, actually. So, that's the Heart Shadow Sword. Now, getting into the exotic we're pairing with it. We are going to be pairing with Heart of the Most Light, because a lot of the stuff that we can use to aid Heart Shadow in DPS um, is based around our abilities. So, I wanted my abilities back as fast as possible to essentially buff Heart Shadow as much as possible. So, we're going to be using Heart of the Most Light for that. And what this does is when I use any of my abilities, it will empower the other two. So it means it does more damage, um, faster regen, or in this case, barricades have more hit points. So they last longer. That's Heart. Very straightforward. And it's going to work extremely well with the Heart Shadow. Uh, so, subclass. I'll, pretty much everything here uh, aids Heart Shadow in some way. The supers are relevant. You can use whichever one you want. I'm just using Sentinel Shield because it's decent ad clear, and uh, Ward of Dawn is not going to be useful for this. The main reason is because I'm going to have lots of sources of overshields, so we don't need that. And Ward of Dawn is only a 20% damage buff. No, it's 25% damage buff, sorry. Um, whereas the mod that I'm going to be using with Heart Shadow is a 35% damage buff, and they do not stack. So Bubble is not really useful for this setup. So I'm just using Sentinel Shield because it can be nice for ad clear on the side uh also i could give my allies a 40 percent damage buff if i wanted to since this is a 40 whereas this is a 25 so yeah uh, and then i'm using rally barricade because it's the fastest cooldown um which is going to be a lot easier to maintain and keep good uptime with heart for my abilities so that's why i'm using that then i'm using shield throw because it, it is an instant cast melee which is perfect for heart as well and then I'm using Vortex Grenades because they just got refixed or rebuffed uh, back up to their original state. So they do lots of damage now. And void uh, Vortex Grenades pull enemies in, which means they're easier to kill with these. Uh, they're one of the highest damaging grenades as well. So it all just works. And uh, the grenades are going to be very useful for this build. So having easy abilities to use to get the grenade back faster is great. Uh, I will recommend in that case... Triple 100 in Resilience, Discipline, and Strength. The reason for this is because Resilience is tied to your Barricade and you want that back as fast as possible. Um, it also gives you a 40% DR increase when you're at 100. 
Uh, we've got discipline for fast grenades. Grenades are going to be very important for this build, so we want those back as much as possible. And then strength for the shield throw. Now, getting into the aspects, we've got Bastion, which basically putting down a barricade or casting my super is going to give me a full overshield. The overshield is going to be nice for survivability when we are attacking things with the sword. Um, you know, it is a sword, so you will have to get up close and personal. And every single boss in the game, except for maybe one improving grounds, uh, has a slam mechanic, which is very boring. But they did nerf slams pretty heavily so that uh, you, can, you can survive for a while. And with overshields on demand, uh, this is going to be very, very easy to counter, right? The slams are going to be easy to counter. And then we have Offensive Bulwark, which is basically here for our grenade. Uh, so when we... When we have an overshield, or we are inside of Water Dawn, that's not relevant, uh, just the overshield that's relevant here, uh, our grenade charges significantly faster. And it really does. It really does charge faster. Um, so paired with Heart of the Most Light and the overshield, we're going to be getting grenades left and right. Uh, it also increases our melee range and damage, um, and melee funnel blows increase the overshield. Of course, we have to actually um, use our melee to get our grenade back with Heart. So all of that just synergizes together and all of our abilities are just constantly cycling out and working because we put down the barricade to get the overshield. Then we can use the melee to extend the overshield and then the grenade recharges faster for having the overshield and because we used our other two abilities with heart. So that's Offensive Bulwark. Now for the fragments, we are going to be using Echo of Instability. The reason for this is because grenade kills will give us volatile rounds for our void weapons. Heart Shadow is void, and Volatile Rounds on Swords is insane, because it procs after every single hit. It doesn't have a uh, subtle build-up to it, it's just every hit. So, that means that every single projectile that comes out of Heart Shadow will proc it, and every single swing will proc it. Um, now, this is why we've specced into grenades so heavily, because Volatile Rounds is going to increase our DPS output a lot. It's going to make add clear easy, it's going to make just killing any enemy easy. So... That's why we have this in it. Then I have Echo of Starvation, which is picking up an Orb of Power Grants Devour. Devour means that we don't have to spec so heavily into survivability. Um, this is essentially, I mean, it's one of the strongest abilities ever in the game. Uh, you get a kill and you instantly have 100 health. Uh, no problem. It's going to be very, very easy to get kills with swords and any other weapon you may decide to choose um, for this build. So that is why I haven't specced into recurve at all, because we don't need it. We have permanent overshields and we have devour on demand. Um, it's going to be very easy to get those orbs, so yeah. Uh, and then I have echo of persistence, which means that my invis, overshield and devour have all been increased, which is perfect because we have all three of those in the build. We have infinite invisibility because uh, we have the heavy attack on heart shadow that gives you invis every single time. Uh, we have overshields, and them lasting longer means we get grenades back easier as well. Uh, and then we have devour, and everything lasting longer means we can keep up time on everything easier. And uh, because everything lasts longer, we don't have to worry about all this stuff as much. So that's that's the void setup, pretty straightforward. Uh, everything cycles together and works hand in hand. So let's get into the mods. All right. So first off, we have Lucent Blade. Now, the reason why we have this is because, again, it is a 35% damage increase, empowerment buff. Uh, it will stack with amplification mods. Uh, we do have one of those in the build, so this is perfect with that. Uh, but also, when you activate its secondary perk, uh, charge rate for swords increases exponentially. Um, Heart Shadow doesn't have an insane charge rate. It's pretty nice. 35 is really good. But uh, increasing that further with Lucent Blade is going to be very very good uh, you can see it actually has more charge rate than a base god roll falling guillotine so yeah it, it is good but lisa blade is just going to make that 10 times better uh to get charged we're going to be using elemental charge which is when you pick up a well that matches your subclass you get two stacks of charge of light um and to make those wells we're going to be using elemental ornaments of course i'm going to be using my grenade for Volatile rounds, so using my grenade also to proc a Lucent Blade just works hand in hand um, because I will want to get volatile rounds before I start shredding into enemies. So getting Lucent Blade on top of that is going to be very, very nice. Um, and then I also have Font of Might, which is an amplification mod. 
so that does stack with Lucent Blade. It is a 25% damage increase, the same as Radiant. Um, and yeah, this will just work hand in hand with everything. I'll basically throw my grenade, I'll get Lucent Blade, Font of Might, and Volatile Rounds all at the same time so that Heart Shadow can go crazy. Uh, again, I have Siphon Mods to make Orbs. The Orbs are basically going to, you know, give me Devour so that I can stay alive longer. Um, so actually... You should probably use insulation. Um, I'm not even sure why I had this in here, honestly. But yeah, insulation will give you class ability cooldown uh, every time you pick up an orb. That's infinitely better than better already with Devour on. So yeah. Uh, and as for everything else, everything else is just kind of helping the sword. Um, I think, yeah, I, I was trying my Trace Rifle with this build. It's awesome, but I was giving Unforgiven a go as well. Uh, that's also just as awesome. If you have an Unforgiving... Uh, especially with Demolitionist for grenades, this is a perfect addition to the loadout um, with Heart Shadow. Since everything is focused around grenades, having Demolitionist is going to be very, very useful. Uh, you could get this from the second and the final encounter of Duality. Um, the drop rate's pretty good. Uh, I usually get this thing mostly over armor, so this is nice. Uh, you can get Adrenaline Junkie here, Rampage, Frenzy, Golden Tricorn pair with demolitionist it's great uh, you're gonna be getting lots and lots of grenades i'm using radiant light for stats again i wanted those three stats right that i mentioned earlier so you want that resist to stay alive longer especially when you're up close and personal with bosses you can use melee uh, damage resistance as well but make sure you got you know one of the armor of the dying stars since that's pretty useful um and yeah i also want to mention um i did try and use radiant with this because, you know, Radiant does increase the damage of my other weapons too. But I think Lucent Blade with Font of Might is a lot better. Because if I want to use Radiant, I can't use Font of Might or one of these other items. So, yeah, I think Radiant is good, but Font of Might is better. Uh, because it, it will stack with Lucent Blade, right, where Radiant won't. Um, so, yeah, that is the build. That is pretty much it. Everything else is just to help the sword. Um, utility Kickstart along with... Momentum transfer is just for abilities. Installation will be for our ability too. We've got perfect stats. The whole build works hand in hand. Everything is perfect. So, yeah, I'm just going to show gameplay of the Heart Shadow now. Just going crazy on things. Um, it is a very, very fun exotic. It shreds. It's honestly equal to Lament in terms of power. Um, it feels awesome. It's just a great exotic. If you haven't gotten it, go farm for it. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the gameplay, and uh, let me know what you think of the build. Adios. Nightmare rises, but do not fear. Destroy it as you have the others.